I'm Yerub Tumay, and welcome to my lecture series on computer and network security. In this second video on key distribution, I will talk about key distribution centers, or KDCs. They are a centralized authority to distribute private keys using symmetric encryption. And a key distribution center manages encryption keys in a hierarchical way, where at least two levels are used. First, you have session keys. Session keys are temporary and they are used between two end systems to encrypt some logical session. A session could, for example, be a TCP connection. When the TCP connection is set up, the session key comes into use and when the session is stopped, the key is discarded. So they are used for short periods of time. Second, there are the master keys. These keys are maintained between the key distribution center and the hosts in the network and are used to safely encrypt and transmit session keys. So master keys are rarely used only when a host requests a new session key, the key distribution center will encrypt that session key using a master key. Recall that fully decentralized key distribution was not very scalable. It required n times n minus 1 divided by 2 keys to be maintained with, in a network with n hosts. My question now is, how many master keys are needed when using a centralized key distribution center in a network consisting of n hosts? Feel free to pause the video if you want to take some time to think about it. And let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is actually n. Only n keys are needed, namely the key distribution center needs to maintain one key with each of the end hosts in the network. And this is sufficient to ensure that keys can be securely shared with anyone in the network. As such, this approach is clearly more scalable. The key distribution center can work in multiple ways. And here you see an example of one possible scenario of how a key distribution center could be deployed. Let's assume two parties, A and B, want to start exchanging secure information and they need a shared session key. Right now, both A and B only share a master key, KA and KB, with the key distribution center or KDC. A will start by sending a request to the KDC. This request contains the identifier of A, the identifier of B, and a randomly generated nonce. The nonce acts as a unique session identifier. It should be um, hard to guess by an attacker. So for example, a random value works really well, and it should also be different for every session. This is to avoid replay attacks, where an attacker intercepts the message and resends it to the key distribution center later on. The key distribution center will receive the message and send back a message encrypted with ACE master key. This message therefore can only be decrypted and read by A. The message will contain a unique session key. Again, the information A had sent to the key distribution center, so the two identifiers and the nonce, so that A can ensure that the message was not altered or replayed, and also a message encrypted with B's master key, which also contains a session key and an identifier of A. Obviously, um, A cannot decrypt this part, but it can forward it in step 3 towards B. B will know this message originated from the key distribution center as only the key distribution center has access to B's master key. So only B and the KDC will be able to read what's inside. At this point, after step three, both A and B are already sharing a session key KS. However, two more steps can be included to ensure authentication and ensure that this um, was not a replay attack. How is that done? Well, B will send a message back to A using this shared session key and a new nonce N2. A 
will then transform into using some function, re-encrypt it also with the session key and send it to B. So now A and B are sure that the message was not replayed and that this is an up-to-date session key that only they know. And key distribution does not need to remain limited to a single entity. Instead, a hierarchy of key distribution centers can be created. This has several advantages because each local key distribution center now is only responsible for a smaller network with less devices. This could be, for example, a local area network or a single building. And thus, each key distribution center only needs to maintain a much smaller set of master keys. For coordination across different local networks with multiple key distribution centers, higher level key distribution centers in the hierarchy can be involved to coordinate this. And let's say a node in local area network 1, node 1.1, wants to set up a session with another node, node 1.2, in the same network. In this case, key distribution happens in exactly the same way as before, namely only a single key distribution center, KDC1, is involved. The node requests a session key for communication with node 1.2 and receives this session key in response, which it can then share with node 1.2 in the same way as explained before. However, if multiple networks are involved, things become a bit more complicated. Let's say node 1.1 now wants to set up a communication session with a node outside of its local network, namely node 2.1. It will again request a session key to its local key distribution center. The local key distribution center maintains a master key to communicate with node 1.1, as well as a master key to communicate with the higher level KDC, in this case, the global KDC. So it can use this master key it shares with the global KDC to request a session key for communication with node 2.1. The global KDC knows that node 2.1 is managed by KDC2 and will negotiate a session key. This session key is then sent back to the global KDC, sent back to KDC1, and finally in step five, shared with node 1.1, which can then set up the session in the same way as before. And many variations of the key distribution mechanism I explained before exists. And here you see one such variation, where key control happens fully transparent to the applications running on the end host. And this approach works with any connection-oriented protocol, like for example the Transport Control Protocol or TCP. When a host tries to set up a secure connection, in the first step, the um, security service running on that host will buffer the packet to request a connection. And instead, you will see that no secure session key between the two communicating hosts exists yet. So the packet will be buffered and the host will contact the key distribution center to request a shared session key. In the third step, this session key is shared with both hosts and only then the buffered packet to request a connection is sent towards the second host, obviously encrypted using the shared session key. So this allows applications to communicate in a secure manner without having to be bothered with practical issues such as key distribution. And this ends my video on key distribution centers. In the next video, I will talk about how to securely share private keys with asymmetric or public key encryption instead.